May the peace of the Lord be with you all. As we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Come, let us now listen to the Word of God. September 22, 2024 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time A reading from the Book of Wisdom The wicked say, let us lie in wait for the righteous man, because he is inconvenient to us and opposes our actions, he reproaches us for sins against the law, and accuses us of sins against our training. Let us see if his words are true, and let us test what will happen at the end of his life, for if the righteous man is God's child, he will help him, and will deliver him from the hand of his adversaries. Let us test him with insult and torture, so that we may find out how gentle he is, and make trial of his forbearance. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for, according to what he says, he will be protected. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, The Lord upholds my life. Save me, O God, by your name, and vindicate me by your might. Hear my prayer, O God, give ear to the words of my mouth. The Lord upholds my life. For the insolent have risen against me, the ruthless seek my life, they do not set God before them. The Lord upholds my life. But surely, God is my helper, the Lord is the upholder of my life. With a free will offering I will sacrifice to you, I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. The Lord upholds my life. A reading from the letter of James. Beloved, for where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have, because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive, because you ask wrongly, in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. The Word of the Lord A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to Mark Jesus and his disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord Gospel Reflection One of the desires that we all have is for greatness. This is a good and natural desire. This desire is manifested in competitiveness in sports and games. It becomes a driving force in business and politics. It drives us to do better in life, such as in school, artistic endeavors, and hobbies, 
working hard to perfect various skills and talents so as to excel. The problem is that every good and natural desire we have is now disordered to a certain degree because of original sin. As a result, the desire we have for greatness can become an obsession, a cause of discouragement when we fail, a source of jealousy when others appear to do better, and can lead us to pursue empty and fleeting goals in life. Even within the life of faith, we can be affected by both the natural desire for greatness and the fallenness of that desire. The natural desire for greatness, when mingled with faith, will lead us to the desire to be a saint and to do great things for the kingdom of God. But as a fallen natural quality, we can also fall into the trap of seeing ourselves in competition with others within the church, and we can become jealous of those who appear to be holy and who are recognized for their good work for Christ. Just prior to the passage quoted above in which the disciples were discovered to have been arguing among themselves about who was the greatest, Jesus predicted to them, for the second time, that he would suffer and die. Recall that after the first prediction of his passion, Jesus took Peter, James, and John up a high mountain and was transfigured before them. Perhaps some of the other disciples became jealous of this apparent special treatment. Then, after Jesus predicted his passion to them for the second time, they might have wondered if some of them would likewise share in a similar experience as the transfiguration. Regardless of what motivated the disciples to argue among themselves about who was the greatest, the fact remains that they did so. This was not the result of a holy and purified desire. It was the result of a good desire for greatness that became distorted and turned into an unholy competition based on jealousy and selfishness. In heaven, we will all know who is the greatest. Interestingly, the scriptures, the official church teachings, and many of the saints reveal to us that there will be levels of glory in heaven. This is why Jesus said elsewhere, store up treasure in heaven, Matthew 6 verse 20. In heaven, each of us will be perfectly happy. But each of us will also share in God's glory in varying degrees, based upon the merit of our charity on earth. The classic example of this is that if every soul is like a glass of water in heaven, then every glass will be full. But some glasses will be larger than others and will be able to contain more water, glory. For this reason, we must remember that the natural desire for greatness is good, but it must be properly ordered by grace. That desire must not become as it was among the disciples who saw each other as competitors. Instead, it must be directed to the deepest desire for holiness and charity. In heaven, we will all be in awe of those holy souls who are filled with the greatest depths of glory forever. Most likely, they will be widely unknown on earth, but loved and admired in heaven for the greatness of their holiness. Reflect, today, upon the desire within your own soul for greatness. Pray that this desire will not fall into selfishness or lead you to see others as competitors. Instead, pray that your desire for greatness will lead you to holiness so that you will be able to store up for yourself the most abundant treasures in heaven and radiate that glory forever. Let us pray. Most glorious Lord, you are greatness itself. You are our eternal glory. I thank you for the natural desire for greatness that has been instilled within my soul. Please purify that desire, and help me to direct it toward holiness so that I will be able to store up in heaven the many treasures you wish to bestow. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and share it with your friends and family, so that they may also be blessed as you are. May God bless you.